welcome back to the Balance Bully Podcast for ambitious women in business and a few brave men. I'm your host, Nikita Rin Thigpen. As always, I am thrilled to be in the space with you today. Listen, we are running through this year with speed and wings, and some of us are trying to figure out how we got this far and why the year is dragging at the same time. And a lot of it might be because we have so much on our plate that isn't aligned with our best skill set and shouldn't be there in the first place, which is why I am extra excited to bring to you this very bold and audacious human, Shiloh Johnson. She is the CEO and founder of Compliant, a cutting edge digital tax assistant helping small business owners and entrepreneurs with a simple way to manage their business taxes so you can get it off of your plate in case it's not aligned with the things that you rather not be doing. Shiloh is one of only 10 Black women to ever raise over $10 million in venture capital. And she's been featured in places like Forbes, Next 1000, Bloomberg Tax, Afrotech, Cranes, Glamour, and built in best places to work in 2023 and beyond. That's just a sneak peek at this potent human. Shiloh, welcome to the BBP. How are you today? Oh, thank you so much, Nikita. That sounded so much better than I feel most days, but I am excellent today. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You know, I'm excited to have you. I think what you're doing is necessary. That's the best label that I could put around it. Um, And I meant what I said in the introduction. There's a lot of us that are moving around in our businesses, especially when you have the ability to outsource, to delegate, to do it different. Then maybe how you started your business, but you get mm-hmm. so caught in, well, this is just what I do. This is the label. This is my identity. I'm the do it all. I'm the superhuman, right? Woman, man, mm-hmm. other, whatever. Mm-hmm. And we get exhausted from doing it. And yet mm-hmm. you've created something that is not only helpful, it is essential because one thing we know for sure <laughs> that you need to pay <laughs> your taxes. <laughs> mm-hmm. What made you decide, you know, beyond your professional background of being a licensed mm-hmm. CPA and all the certifications that you hold, which are multiple, you are what yeah. we call a multi hyphenated human. <laughs> but what made you decide to create a digital asset and version of this business? So um, I'm going to take you back through this journey a little yes, bit. Yes, please. Uh, <laughs> so when I left corporate and I ran my own tax practice, I actually was serving uh I was supporting a mentor I had at the time. She ran a business management firm mm-hmm. out of LA, one of the largest minority owned firms, in fact. And so she had some sort of tax only clients that she was willing to give over. And so these are like DF list celebrity people no one really knows. And then like, you know, athletes that, you know, ride the bench, sort of people that no one really knows. But it got me in this space of what I was going to consider myself like a high net worth accountant that was serving. The elite that was where yes. I, in my mind was taking my career. I know what right. I started to get were small businesses that were like, "Hi, um, I don't know anything, and the IRS or the state of California is knocking at my door, and I owe way more money than I have access to. Can you help me?" Oh. And a lot of these folks could not afford what I considered to be my fee structure. I, Multi hyphenated is expensive. CPAs, right. period, are expensive That's and, right. if they're worth their weight in salt. So I knew I wasn't willing to compromise. But what I started doing was I started just supporting them pro bono and I would just send them resources like here, you know, try looking this up, go here, try doing this, call the state. So I was trying to send them through how to like allocate or navigate some of this on their own. And I was looking for some software or like a functional website that I could send them to as a resource. Mm. I couldn't find anything. And I was like, there's got to be a a block in the middle of like, I'm a new business owner and I'm thriving and can afford to pay a CPA. There's got to be something in between there because in between there, people are going bankrupt from financial issues and tax issues. People are crying into their pillows at night talking about, I don't know how I'm going to pay this bill and I don't have enough revenue and I need to, you know, buy more products so I can continue to sell. But now the IRS is knocking and it's like, those folks need the support so much and there's nothing for them. Yes. And so I was like, I need to just support the call that I keep getting. Because these people were just coming to me organically. They were finding me on the internet or whatever. And mm-hmm. oh yeah, no. 
we got to do something about that. So I was like, I will be a high net worth accountant later. Right now, I got to support the people. <laughs> no, I love it. Your um, that part of your story story really reminds me of when my husband and I, twelve years ago, when we jumped into entrepreneurship. I'm a clinician, mm-hmm. trauma specialist from background, and when mm-hmm. I decided, it was with the same mission that you and I were talking about in the green room to build stronger families so they can create new yeah. multi generational imprints from their self actualized wholeness. And finances and communication around finances is the number one reason that a lot of otherwise normally healthy families separate, right? And all the structures and all the ancestral trauma, drama, all the stuff kind of creeps in and and leaks onto the next generation. So we started a staffing agency with a professional development arm. And like you, because that yeah. was the goal, we're like, well, this is where yeah. we're starting, you know, climb from there to this yeah. huge institute, which we now have. And um, people were coming organically like, no, we actually want more of this. We need help with our relationship and our business, like and not from a tell me how to run the business, but help me with the balancing of it. So I have time mm-hmm. and energy for my intimacy so I can yeah. do this without sacrificing success. And I, I kept pushing them yeah. away like. No, that's no, that's that's my old psychotherapy hat. No, what I'm trying to do is get you a job so you can make better money. And people were basically calling me into my purpose. um, And I just had to listen. So I think that that's really hilarious that you were experiencing the same thing and and really the same genre of health equity. Just you happen to be a professional with money management. <laughs> Where I was coming from, from the heart space and, and the mind. There you go. That's it all in, works. Right? It all works. But that's incredible. So now you're helping you. the people who need you the most. Uh, what does that yeah. look like for your life and your luxury and your aspirations to create better for you and the human yeah. that has come from your womb? Yeah. So uh, interestingly enough... <laughs> Uh, which I believe this is true of life is like when you follow, you know, the path that is yours, even if yeah. it doesn't look financially successful. I didn't really know much about tech. I didn't know what, you know, what my earning power could have been. The goal was like, let me make something that I think people need and that they will buy. And then we'll figure the rest out later. I was very sort of base <laughs> barrel level with it. I was not trying to be like, this is my retirement plan. No, but I, I do believe when you honor, you know, the need and, and the gift that you have and, and so doing that that it comes back to you. Yeah. And so as a result, the wealth I was trying to acquire when I first made my fund came back to me by way of the product I've been able to build and, and the people we've been able to support. And as a result, we were able to take investors in and so the company was valued at a higher amount, which means that I and I own a portion of this company. So technically I own a portion of the company that's worth a lot more money than I was gonna make. I know that's with right. My, my D list celebrities, but and as a result, <laughs> I've I've been able to start to set some things up. I actually have three children and I was able to set up trust accounts for each of them and gives them some equity. And so just teaching them about how to start to think about their lives in this new way, which has been really beautiful to do. Yeah. Well, I have to wonder how you're, and I don't know how the ages of your babies, but how they're looking up at you and both seeing the realness, the behind the scenes of what mommy really has to put into creating (laughs) this life for us now, as well as what I'm sure you're constantly talking about, like why you're doing what you're doing and you know the hours that you're putting in as a what i would call an overachiever right by by qualifier you could have just went for one million you were like no 10 million please like you you went all the way through and and beyond um but when you're having those conversations those heart to hearts with your kids about what it looks like to not only help people and to serve but to make sure that you honor the legacy you're creating are some of those conversations, are they able to receive them now at their various ages? Or they're just like, mom, whatever. I'm trying to get the new sneakers and yes <laughs> to doing the chores. Okay. Like, <laughs> what is that? They're much like older. So okay. they're actually looking down on me. My son is six, six, six oh. years. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they're, they're lucky looking down on me. But um, so they're <laughs> 22, 20, and 19. And so nice. they actually watched my entire come up. So when they were born, I was a teenage mom. I was Mm -hmm. 17 when I had my oldest daughter. And Mm -hmm. I went to college. 
mm-hmm. with her on my hip, mm-hmm. <laughs> finished high school with her on my hip and my son and my third child. I, mm-hmm. I sort of went through a marriage and a divorce and just kind of, they watched me do it all. They watched me go back to college. They watched me get a graduate degree. They watched me study until two, three, four in the morning and then mm-hmm. blink my eyes and get up and get them to school. They watched me do it all, cry in the corner because I'm so tired or stressed or disappointed mm-hmm. that I couldn't give them what I knew I, I, they deserved and what I was trying to do for them. So they watched it all and then got to in this latter part of their life. So by the time my daughter got to high school, everything started to change. I finished my graduate degree. I got my licensure. I started really pushing the boundaries of what I was capable to do <clears throat> with my earning power. And so their lives started to dramatically change. And then once I launched Compliant, it, I mean, like, <laughs> and they were like, whoa. <laughs> and interestingly enough, my kids tell me this all the time. They remind me of this. There was one point uh, just before I raised my first dollar, like we probably had two or three employees on the helm that I wanted to hire. It was just me. I'm like still sussing out this idea. And I'm like, I think I'm going to get this investment. And it was like $100,000. In comparison to this twelve point eight million I've raised, that feels like small dollars now, but then it was everything. Oh, and so course. as I'm getting through that and, and of course I'm like, hey, I just want y'all to know everything is about to change. And not because anything was any different. Like we still lived in the same apartment. I didn't have a car when I was building compliant, I sold it so I could spend all my money on this business. Mm-hmm. But in so doing, they were like, Mom, you always tell us, like, when you said that, everything was about to change. You meant every word, and it did tremendously, like 180%. And I was like, that's because I, 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 knew, I knew. A, I know what I'm capable of as your mother. And I wanted you to see all of what we went through wasn't for nothing. Mm-hmm. And you need to understand the relationship between struggle and success. I don't ever want you to only see struggle and assume that's all there is for you. Yes. There is relationship between struggle and success. And if you work hard, there is gifts and winnings on the other side of that effort. And that lives in the consistency of you getting to it every single day, not because you hit one leg on one thing that did well, but because every day you did the same thing. Every day you showed up to serve the people that that you're showing up to serve and support by honoring yourself and the gifts that you have. Just do that over and over. And that those are the conversations we have all the time. They're always asking me, like, what am I supposed to do with my life? Serve the people that you're meant to serve with the gifts you've been given. Mm -hmm. Get to work. Woo. It is very rare that I want to take off my bunny slipper and throw it. And this is one of those moments. <laughs> yes, yes, and yes to every single syllable of what you said. <laughs> Honoring the power that you sit yeah. on, knowing that you can speak life or death into anything. And you're like, listen, what we're not doing is we're not yeah. going backwards. So it's, it's only up from here, children. Yeah. Yeah, let's get it. Let's go. That was, I literally got chills when you were talking. Like, that is such a confirmation on so many levels, but also a reminder of the power of a human when you really want something and you're willing to put in the work for it. You're willing to honor your need for whatever rest you need. You know, this one got a doctor's appointment, this one had, you know, Mm the flu, this one, (laughs) maybe sometimes all at the same time, right? Like all of the things that you're doing while literally managing your next level seed, the imprint that you're creating, the ripple that you're making, not only in this universe, but in each and every part, every cell of your children, because it matters. And I think a lot of us forget that. It's like we carry trauma, we can carry greatness. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll even double down and say they need you to be transparent with them about the trauma and the journey to to greatness. That's how they learn. They're not really learning by what you say. They're learning by what you do. They find the strength within themselves to stand up and do something more when times are hard because they they tell themselves, well, mom did it or dad did it. I I can do it too. And so honoring that and, and taking them on the journey with me while I was doing and then saying, this is the team effort. We're all going to get there together. This means that you're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to sacrifice. I won't be at every game. I won't be at every cheerleading competition. But that's because I'm trying to build for something beyond cheerleading competition. So that 20 yes. and 30 and 40 years from now, you have a legacy for your children. And you can be at every game and every cheerleading competition because of what I invested into you and this family. It's a group thing. It isn't just me working and sacrificing and you angry because I wasn't there. It's all of us are on this journey together. And if we keep that perspective, it I think it removes a little bit of that guilt. Yeah. 
the guilt and also the heaviness that a lot of children growing up in the shadow of greatness, whether they were privileged, which your kids were, to see it Mm -hmm. in real time so they have some context to it, um, or they were born into it already kind of being formatted, it really does make a difference for them to not feel and I'm not, because I don't want to take this away from your kids, because they they may, yeah. I've had conversations, mine are 26 and 22, I've had conversations about the shadow, the looms, you know, husband, wife together for 28, going on 29 years, all of it. And my son is like, I don't like these chicks like that, you know, like all of them. <laughs> All of the the differences that come get like I, yeah. but I wanted to have what you and Dad had since we were seventeen. And I'm like well, yeah. that's not everyone's journey. At the same time, <laughs> don't get it twisted. Yeah. It wasn't easy as one, two, three either. <laughs> but knowing that and having those honest conversations does mm-hmm. help to remove a little bit of imposter syndrome from yeah, them of them sure. thinking they could never reach what their mother has delivered. I would say aspired, but she actually has delivered one already and continuing. Well, what's next for you in your journey? Are you um, sitting back and collecting royalties? You know, I'm being silly. Um, or are you <laughs> creating another hyphen? Oh, yeah. So I always say this uh, to myself and anybody who will listen. Um, I'm not interested in a soft life, <laughs> I can, but also I can, I can slay these folks in silk pajamas. Don't play with me. I so I, right. I, will keep, <laughs> I will, I will keep going. Um, also because I, I, part of me honoring my gifts is knowing that I have a level of ambition inside of me that does not exist in a lot of people. Yeah. And so I don't want to try and subdue or demure it. I want to allow it to be. So whatever that means. Right now, the current focus is getting compliant to IPO. That's 100% okay. of my mind. No one you become responsible for, for a lot of folks' salaries. Yeah. You want to make sure you can honor it and, and get to goal for those folks so that they can see wealth for them and themselves and their families and as investors in the company as well. So that's my, my goal right now is to do right by the investors who believe in us and continue to support us. And then also the people that work within the company to believe in and support us and continue to move the goal forward. Uh, there's something really valuable about other young ladies or men or any minority look or, or trying to navigate hard times, seeing my story as being something they can, um, you know, hold on to as motivation. Yes. So yes. as much as I can be as visible as I can, trying to get the company, you know, up, getting being the first solo founder, Black woman to IPO, a billion dollar company is no easy feat. And as many more of those folks can get there, let me be the third or fourth or let some, let the 10th or 20th come after me as a result of watching me. And that ultimately is, you know, what I'm trying to get to. I want to max out, max out on, on my capacity. Yeah. So if, if this is my cup, I want to empty it like six or seven times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> max yeah. out on capacity. Um, because in my mind, that's, that's the, that's the only next step. There's no retirement. There's no like, I'm going to go spend six months in Dubai or whatever. I, I don't know. <laughs> that, that is not to me the goal. To me, my, for me, the goal is to max out on the capacity of what I am able to do. Yeah. Push myself to those limits and then, okay, I've reached my limits. I'm ready to step back. And that's a life I can, I can rest well with that I did the best I could with everything that I had. Absolutely. It's the, the pouring yeah. out. So you have nothing left when you. Yeah. retire for life, so to speak, when you're, yeah. you're no longer walking <laughs> this plane. I, I hear yeah. that and I respect that on multiple yeah. levels when you, you're unapologetic about your yeah. ambition and there's no reason, <laughs> right? Like there's no reason to even attempt to apologize for it. Although a lot of people hearing will often say things like, oh, that's too much. Like I'm, I'm not trying to do that. And my response typically yeah. is that's okay. It's it okay. Is. There's no 100%. need to compete or compare or nope. to feel less than because if that's not a part of your journey, then your journey has its own part. And who knows where we'll intersect again. Absolutely. That. And that isn't the moniker of expectation for every black woman or every woman, period, that if Come your on. ambition levels are not on one million, you're not achieving life. No, no, no. Your ambition levels can be on too. If your sole goal is to have a garden and to figure out how to prune apples or whatever, grapes, yes, honey, you better figure it out because yes. you're honoring yourself to the capacity of what you have. And that's that's all we really need to be doing. There is no measure of what that capacity should be. We all don't need to be on 1,000. 
Some folks are just on two, and that is absolutely as acceptable and equally as beautiful and as powerful. Absolutely, because I like my apples, so please keep <laughs> growing them. <laughs> if that is the way you, I appreciate that. Same, <laughs> it makes same. my day better, right? <laughs> like we, we all have a part to play. I love that you yeah. use that specifically. Yeah. For, telling on myself a little bit. <laughs> when you backing up for a second, because you mentioned the role to IPO, which in and of itself yep. is arduous and glorious at the same time. I know that there's a <laughs> lot of very uncomfortable things that you'll have to navigate that you're already navigating in the process. And one of them is you have, you already have a team of, I think over 20 employees currently, right? I do. I have 53. 53. Okay. I have, I needed to up my, my multiplier. So at almost 60 (laughs) employees, at almost 60, what does that look like for you when we talk about you know, work life and love balance and you trying to create the spaciousness for yourself to honor who you are as an overachiever, to honor your, your work pace, but also looking at the differences of who you've hired and maybe their different styles and their best skills and their best fit in the culture that you're creating, especially as a black woman. How does that look for you behind? I know I'm getting like all between the curtains <laughs> up there. Like, what does that look like for you, Shiloh? I'm really, I'm really curious. There's a couple of parts to that question. I'll start with the bit of balance. Um, yeah. I, I do think that balance is a moving scale. Yeah. It's a moving target. I, I And I'm always concerned for my peers who are like, I've got to find balance. What does that even mean um, to me? It. Mm-hmm. It is it is fluctuating. Some days it's up here and I've got to do more mental contribution to get my mind strong. Some days it's down here and I just need to sleep. <laughs> some days Come it's on. leaning on the edge and I just need to cry. And some <laughs> days it's energized and I need to get out of my sun. And some days it's love and I just want to be there. So I, I do want to make sure, like, I think what we're looking for, and I see this a lot in like social media, is there's some like ideal. And everyone's mm-hmm. looking to like mimic this ideal. And if I have this ideal, that must mean that it is balanced. And then they get it and they're like, I still don't feel balanced because you're chasing someone else's leveling someone. stick and your leveling stick is moving. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How can you chase someone, someone else's still while your leveling stick and everyone's leveling stick is making a, a sort of up and down journey? And so I, I want to be careful to say balance for me is, is constantly moving. And it is being sensitive to what my mind and my soul and my body needs in any given moment. And if I can do that, to me, that's balance, is being sensitive to what I am saying to me and then doing it. Like, I'm like I, I am hungry. So yes. let me feed my body with whatever it needs to be fed with. I need healthy food. I need vegetables. I need meat. I need water or whatever that my body is saying to me. And it is saying it to you. It's saying it to you when your stomach hurts. It's saying it to you when your head hurts. It's saying it to you when you got the bubble guts or whatever. Come it on. It's That's speaking right. to you and you're not honoring it. You're ignoring it and then trying to chase some other version of balance that belongs to somebody else. So I want to say just break up with whatever you think balance is. It's not 5 a.m. journaling and meditating and doing yoga and then going to run and then walking your dog. Like, no, it's it's whatever it needs to be uh, for your moving stick. And so for me, that's it. I'm just listening to me as much and as often as I can and learning to trust me over and over and over again, doubling down on trusting me. Um, as far as building a team and leveraging getting pieces of me back. So my whole life is not work. (laughs) That part. Uh, Mm -hmm. I actually love working. I am one of the very rare weirdos who will uh, work all night uh, because I just like the work I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Um, So a lot of it is back to like listening to me when, when I'm tired and my eyes need to close, it's just time to stop. And so when you're building a team of people that you need to give work to, you are in service to those people that work at that company. I say this all the time. I do not code. I do not create the marketing plan. I'm not posting. I'm not doing CS. It is the people that work at Compliant that is doing that work. And my job as the CEO in service to me and my investors is to serve those people and create a workspace where they can be the best versions of them. I don't need them to be me. I need them to be them. I need my coders to be coding. I don't code, Mm -hmm. that's you. 
Mm -hmm. I'll take care of the other stuff. I'll make sure your salary is good. I'll make sure you've got equipment. I'll make sure you can you have some version of work-life balance so that you can spend time honoring yourself. And then you just do what you do. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the thing as a Black woman, as Black people, period, that we do not honor and leverage enough is we don't need to repeat the game using the roadmap that was placed before us. That roadmap is for someone who does not look like us. Mm. And we are not honoring <laughs> what gifts we have for the people that look like us. Like we are more charismatic. We are more artistic. We are more empathetic. There are things about who we are as a culture that we're not leveraging because we're trying to follow their blueprint. Yes. And this is not even a racial divide. I think that it is just clear and obvious. I cannot do what my white peers are doing. I'm not a white man. And they're not going to see me like a white man. They're going to see me like a black woman. And I need to honor that. And so instead of trying to put on like I am something that I'm not, I just get into it and say, hey, this is where we are and who we are and what we will be. And either you're going to rock with it or you are not, or this isn't the place for you. And as a result, everyone is like, yes, we love it here. (laughs) Because I'm not trying to be... The typical tech founder. I'm right. trying to be me. I'm trying to be the CEO that laughs with the company and builds a place that people actually want to be every day. If I line up with the typical, you know, whatever mm-hmm. CEO founder, tech founder trope, I'm going to lose everybody because they're going to be like, A, you're not being genuine to you. This is fake and we could tell. And B, this isn't going to work for you. This isn't so true. You're not. Your lane is never crowded. Okay. You're never, it's never going to fail you staying in your lane. Me yes. trying to drive and just be so lane or whoever else is lane, Travis Calcanis, it is not, I'm going to crash. <laughs> right. But if I say in my lane, I say true to honoring who I am and not be so bound to um, others' perceptions of who they think I am. Nope, don't care. What you think I can do? Nope, don't care. <laughs> the only thing I need to focus on is what I know I can do and what is to be true and creating a culture where people want to be. I can resurface the belief and ideal that good business can come from people that don't look like the traditional successes of good business. Yeah. Like, and with that opportunity, I, I, have to, I have to honor it. I have to be true to the fact that like we can do good business and have <laughs> create a great place to work. Absolutely. And as a result, I'm not doing half bad. <laughs> no, I, I think you're doing a, an amazing, incredible job. Both of the bunny slippers is off and was about to come <laughs> flying. Okay. Now that is a first. And I've been podcasting since 2012. So here we are. However many, oh, you know, nice. you know the math better than I do. <laughs> Whatever year that this is now in 2023, <laughs> it has never happened before where both of the bunny slippers have come off and was about to go flying at her for this mic <laughs> drop moment that has happened <laughs> multiple times. Yes, yes, and yes. And I put in parentheses the and because this is the space that I live in. I don't believe you have to be in an or situation. Yeah. Because you're talking about honoring yourself, being in integrity with who you are at your core and allowing yourself to evolve and doing so with wherever you ripple and pour into, yeah. which happens at this stage of your life to be compliant. Yeah. That you're yeah. in addition to your family, of course, but yeah. pouring in and you're not minimizing yourself to what the 15 year old version of yourself or those people who knew yeah. you at 15 are trying to hold you to when they get to say things like, cause I knew Shiloh when like, yes, you did know me pigtails and ponytails. You don't know mm-hmm. Shiloh, the CEO of a multi-million dollar conglomerate. That is, and I underline with intention and God as my witness, that is IPOing. Like they don't know that Shiloh. Okay. Yes. Listen. <laughs> Woo. I clearly could talk to you all day and I'm already oh naked my on my feet at least. So I, <laughs> before I strip down any other clothes with all that you are creating in the, the spaciousness, the beauty, the cultural difference for the new culture of your organization for compliance, yeah. not only for your team, but for your clients and your investors. Yeah. How are you giving yourself permission to pause? Oh, um, I'm sensitive to it every day. Yeah. Um, I am unbelievably introspective. 
if on the list of gifts that Shiloh has, introspection is like one or two, and probably not number two. <laughs> and because I spend a lot of time with myself, yeah. I am very sensitive to when I am not myself. Mm-hmm. And I am also very sensitive to when I just need, oh, I can feel it just going up a little bit. Oh, hold on. I need a minute. Let me go outside. Oh, I need a minute. Let me check in. And this is the power of um, when, when you hear all over, the, everywhere, where everyone's like, you need to just be alone, be alone. I don't know that um, I mean it, or maybe most people don't mean it in the sense that you don't need to be in a relationship. I, I think people mean it in the sense that you need to be with yourself. Yes. And you need to be with yourself so much so that you can feel when the anger is coming before it ever arrives, or you can feel when the pain is coming before it ever arrives, or you can feel it. You can feel when the discomfort is arriving, and then you can set in place your coping or support mechanisms to be able to help you balance. That's the pause for me. It's getting up and feeling that immediately my emotions are off too. I don't know why, and that's not for me to figure out yet. Right now, I need to get back level. And the reason this is unbelievably important, if you are CEO listening, please, please hear. If you heard nothing else I said, hear this. Your job is to make intense decisions every single day. And in order for you to make those decisions with a clear mind and a clear heart and no judgment, you have to breathe. You have to create the balance within yourself so you can show up for the decision making in clear mind. You can't do that if you're stressed about who didn't or did or didn't do the dishes, who did or didn't you know, mow the lawn or all the other things. Somebody didn't pick up the so-and-so and then so-and-so didn't do their homework. And now you've got all these things that are clouding your mind that are preventing you from showing up to be able to make clear decisions. This is what I think hangs us up as women leaders because we're carrying the weight of 42 people. Mm-hmm. What I do to create pause, I am so fast to spend money on things that, that I don't, so that I don't have to do it myself. Listen to me. I, <laughs> <laughs> we we about to have maid, somebody, a lawnmower, I know, a dog right. walker, whoever. I maybe said my kids are old now, but if they were little, I would have a nanny. Because I need to create the space within me that I have a moment to myself to be able to be present in my decision making. I cannot come to work carrying all day with me. So I will put in the necessary support help so that I don't have to carry all day with me. And that's how I create the pauses, whomever I need to hire. I need to, I heard, um, I heard a founder, he's a founder of order mark. I forget his name. It escapes me at the moment, but he came and spoke at tech stars to us once. And he said, every Monday morning, I get a massage mm-hmm. because I want to set the tone for the week. Yeah. And I was like, yep. <laughs> so every Sunday <laughs> I get a massage <laughs> because I want to set the tone for the week. Mm-hmm. And there are moments like that where you, what I got from him was like, Your job is to show up clear-minded and present so that you can make good decisions. You're making decisions on the behalf of every person that works within your company. And you've got, they are relying on you to be the best version of you. So I'm quick, I'm quick to hire somebody. Who do we need to pay? I know, that's mom, right. Let's pay somebody to mop the floor. I'm not <laughs> listen, cre- creating more generational wealth. Like, let me let me spread it across, not just deep within. Listen, I hear that. Yes. And I heard you say, I am not afraid to delegate, 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 oh, no. delegate. I heard, And that is a huge hang up for a lot, especially yeah. if you're new in the sense of less than five years of owning yeah. a company. It can yeah. be really hard for you to justify mentally paying for something that you feel, or maybe you have a, a script about it being a privileged yeah. thing yeah. Like you, to use that example. Cause there's a lot of mamas yeah. and papas yeah. that are listening yeah. to the show and they have little people like, Oh, how dare I have a nanny or how dare I get help with housekeeping or why wouldn't yeah. you, why wouldn't you yeah, it freeze you absolutely. up to create something? If it is your journey to create something as massive as compliant. So you too can IPO it. Should you choose? For that to be your path. And even more for you to show up. If, if your sole goal is to be a better mother, remove the barriers to that. What's prevent, yes. preventing you from being the best mother you can be or showing up in your brain or being present in your love life with your partner? You know what's preventing you? All the tedium that you need to do throughout the day that someone else really could have done. And there are so many now gig workers and folks that don't work for minimum dollars to try and get some experience. You can hire interns. You can hire overseas remote workers. There's so much help you can get. If managing your calendar is two extra hours in a day that you just don't have the mental capacity for, 
hire a remote person to do that for you. And that's two extra hours you can either spend eating slowly, deep breathing, mm-hmm. walking with your child, having a small conversation about the plants that are growing, yes. something that serves your spirit. It doesn't always have to be purely you know, work ambition. You can hire someone to manage your home calendar. That's right. It's one extra thing that you don't have to do that you are now pre- available to be present for the people that you're serving and supporting. Whether it's work or home, the service is still there. And how do you show up in that and as the best version of you? Not doing things somebody else could do. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally about to be naked, Shiloh. So I need to stop <laughs> wanting to strip things to throw them at you because I'm trying to be quiet when you're talking like, yes, 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 in the background. I'm trying to be mindful, but before I'm literally embarrassing everyone else around me, (laughs) um, (laughs) I have to thank you for carving out this time and this extra overflow time. I want to super honor you for that. And really for you being so transparent and honest and your reflection of what it truly took for you to get here, because I noticed you didn't use the word, my husband and I joke about people who use this within the context of what I'm saying, when they say things like just, oh, I just had yeah. to, and they minimize the real work <laughs> that you really put into it. Yeah. So thank you yeah. for not minimizing your growth sure. and your evolution and honoring not only where you have arrived, but where you're expanding. It's, it's a beautiful thing. And I love thank seeing you. your brilliance shine through. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. You're welcome. How can people connect with you and find out more about compliant yeah. and all the multi hyphenated things? <laughs> so you can find out about compliant everywhere at compliant with a Y instead of an I. We're compliant app on every platform. And you can find more about me and on every platform at Shiloh A. Johnson. A is for Antoinette, that's my middle name. And I'm easy to find. <laughs> that's awesome my favorite cousin's name is Antoinette that's an easy one too <laughs> she's also a brilliant forensic scientist so the brilliance uh, must okay. be somewhere right in there <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much Shiloh I appreciate you and I look forward to more conversations of course Balance Bowley listeners, I know I have to stop being so cocky and literally swiping my shoulder like the little people like, I did it again. I did it again. Boop, boop. Another phenomenal, potent human that showed up fully as their self. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Now, you know, if you are a follower of the show, I have two asks. The first is for you to think of that one person in your ecosystem that can benefit from hearing Shiloh's story. Who is it? Is it a business owner that really needs the services of compliance so they can get something off their plate that's not aligned with their best skill set? Or is it just her journey that she shared that was so powerful and a reminder that you do not have any limitations that you don't submit to yourself? Share. No explanation. Send the interview. Click the share button on whatever podcast app you're listening to this to heard this dope interview thought of you that's it don't give any additional context because you know you'll project something that makes them not want to tune in so make sure you do that for me please and the second is enjoy the balance of your day but remember do it boldly 